episode 37 of the Redmont Rangers Road to Glory career mode and we have a huge episode a massive game to kick things off Aston Villa traveling to Redmont Arena to take on Redmont Rangers in the fourth round of the FA Cup some big debuts in today's game not just for Redmont Rangers which we'll get to in just a second but apparently for Aston Villa as well potentially so far, Unai Emery hasn't confirmed when we can expect to see Vitinha make his first team debut. When asked, the manager smiled and said, good things come to those who wait. After the players moved to Aston Villa from Paris Saint-Germain, some fans have questioned whether the team needed Vitinha at all. So, potentially we will see Aston Villa's new boy, Vitinha, in this particular game. We will definitely be seeing Redmond Rangers' new boy, Jesse Cartwright, who is going to make his first start for the club after being called up from the youth academy and he's going to start in the center of a back five against Aston Villa expecting to have to defend vigorously in this game expecting to give up a lot of possession to the Premier League club so going with a back five I think is right I've had a quick look at the pre-match report as well and it looks like Aston Villa are going to play a 4-2-4 so I think matching up with a 5-2-3 Especially with these wingers in Eli Justin, Ryan Lancaster coming back in defence, I think is going to be essential. We could see a debut as well um, for Jasper Fields. So the 16-year-old centre midfielder on the bench for Redmond Rangers today as well. Jesse Cartwright just 17. So two very, very young players, but players with a massive, massive future ahead of them at Redmond Rangers. So we're going to jump straight into this game against Aston Villa. No waiting around. Premier League opposition at Redmond Arena for the very first time. We'll check out the pre-match report again. I didn't see Vitinha on there last time, I don't think, but he is there on the bench. So Martinez, Montiel, Mancini, Pau and Revan, who looks potentially to be a youth player. I'm not sure who Revan is and he doesn't have a face there. Diaby and Barry and then Douglas, Louise and Bogard in centre midfield. Ollie Watkins and Iglesias up front. So something of a rotated 11 for them. They do have Julian Alvarez on the bench. So Aston Villa splashing the cash in the transfer windows past. Four wins out of their last five and they're a massive four star team. So by far the best team to come to Redmond uh, Arena. They're going to play out wide. They're going to press aggressively to win the ball back. And they're going to be patient in possession, according to our pre-match report. No press conference to get to. So we will make sure the kits are fine, which they are. And we will jump straight into this game. Redmond Rangers versus Aston Villa in the FA Cup. The man to watch. Youth will have its say. What a day it is for the youngster as he's named in the starting lineup for the first time. And a warm welcome on what is. Moving like a striker there in the warm ups, Jesse Cartwright. He's a big boy, 6'6, 185, I want to say. So, really, really big guy. But moves fairly well for a player with that kind of a frame. So I think we're going to have to try and do what we can in possession. I don't think we want to relinquish possession possession too easily to Aston Villa, as we have just done there. I don't think we want to make a habit of that. I think we want to try and keep the ball for as long as we can when we have it. We do want to be aggressive. We do want to try and score. We do want to take the game to Aston Villa, basically. We don't just want to sit back meekly and and, you know, let them do what they want. But at the same time, they're clearly far and away the better team. So the longer we can keep the ball, the better, to be honest. Jesse Cartwright wins his first header. First test he passes with flying colours. And he finds himself in an advanced position here. Very confident, the young 17-year-old. Stepping forward to take the Aston Villa players on himself. It's a good opportunity from Brandon Anderson to shoot and it's a good save from Emmy Martinez. What a positive start from Redmond Rangers though. 
forging the first shot on goal. And it was a shot from range from a defensive midfielder, but it was a shot on target. Ryan Lancaster to take the corner. I'm going to try and have somebody run near post. And Jake Dale is that man. Can't quite get his head on the ball, though. Josh Key's going to have to come across and cover as Ollie Watkins picks the ball up and holds the ball up. Musa Diaby tries to move wide, as the pre-match report suggested that he would, but it's really good defended. And Eli just could be in behind here. Squares it for Jake Dale, who runs into the penalty area. It's a good save initially from Emmy Martinez, but he can't hold on to it. And it's another shot on target for Redmond Rangers who have been the better team in this opening 10 minutes. Jesse Cartwright again wins the header. And again, Redmond Rangers are away. There's not too much going on in the box. We wanted Jake Dale in there, but he was the one who started the attack there. And this is where we're going to be in trouble. Musa Diaby is got far too much pace really for anyone on the team nobody on our team can keep up with that amount of pace looks like he had a I think that was a a rapid playstyle plus as well potentially so he's gonna have free reign down that right hand side Aston Villa now starting to impose themselves on the game a little more. It's a good challenge from Brandon Anderson, though. And we'll just hook the ball away. Managed to find Jake Dale with the clearance. And Eli just is away down the wing. And the ball manages to squeeze through to him. Cuts inside two Aston Villa defenders. Gets a shot away. And it's another great save from Emmy Martinez. What a run from Eli just down the left-hand side there. Jake Dale managed to find him. He cut inside really well. And that was possibly, yeah, a little too close to the goalkeeper, but would have been tucked neatly away in the bottom corner there if he hadn't made the save. We'll try another near post run. And we'll try and find Jake Dale with it again. We do find Jake Dale. Brandon Anderson with his right foot snatches at it. And that was probably a poor decision from Brandon Anderson there. Probably would have been better served just laying it off to the corner taker so we've got a much smaller squad now after January several departures especially along the back line we had Harrison Stanley moving on to Sheffield United one of our better defenders But we couldn't deny him a move to, I believe, championship opposition. I believe they got relegated in the first season and I believe they didn't go back up. Possibly they are even Premier League opposition though. So we couldn't deny Harrison Stanley that move away to, to a much bigger club than our own. Jesse Cartwright coming across there to try and shut the attack down it's Ryan Lancaster that does exactly that in the end though Josh Key plays the ball out to Ryan Lancaster he was in a bit of trouble lingering on the ball for far too long and it's a comfortable save from Roman Hewitt in the end so yeah Harrison Stanley leaves oh Jesse Cartwright it didn't check out his play styles He did have four to five play styles in the Youth Academy. And I've just seen, I believe he's got a play style plus. Uh, which is the blocking one. I forget exactly what they're called. But the one with the little roadblock. I think it's just called... It's not just called block, I don't think. It might be though. I've tried to talk about transfers several times, but I keep getting distracted. Harrison Stanley, off to Sheffield United. Um, 
Aidan Hutton, however, was unhappy with the playtime and he put in a transfer request, so he left. Zach Francis, the same, unhappy with the playtime that he was getting, which was very little, so he put in a transfer request and he is gone. Reese Bevan, the same, unhappy with his role in the squad, so put in a transfer request. He left in January, so lots and lots of departures in January for Redmond Rangers. Just the one addition, it's a poor pass. Just the one addition in Daniel Jebison, and even he was already in the squad. We just simply made his loan deal permanent. So, much, much smaller squad. Does mean our morale is probably going to be a little higher because we haven't got so many players to keep invested. A deep cross from Ryan Lancaster over to Eli Just. Tries to carve out a bit of space for himself in the penalty area. And it's a good interception from Michael Garbutt. Aston Villa not playing particularly well at the moment. Half an hour gone and they've not caused us too many issues to be honest. I expected a much tougher game against Premier League opposition. I do think the five at the back formation is working really well for us though. And Josh Key is away here. Chips the ball into the back post again. But again, we're unable to put a Redmond Rangers head on it. Yeah, I do think the 5-2-3 is, is the perfect setup against what Aston Villa are trying to do. So I do think that's a big reason of why we've been fairly comfortable so far. And probably, I think you would argue, we've been the better team so far. It's a good ball in, Jake Day, although beat into the header. So Roy lifts it in again. Michael Garbutt dives to the head of the ball. I wondered if he just might let it drop onto his foot and volley it. I think potentially hands on his back there. Forced him to make a move, and I think potentially as half a shout in there for a penalty even oh it's a good ball to set Barry away and Caleb Taylor comes over to deal with it but he gets beaten and it's a really really poor finish from the Aston Villa player not sure who that was making a run in from the edge of the box but he just snatches at the chance and drags it wide Oh no, what have we done here? The camera changed just at the last minute and we're 1-0 down. That's such a disappointing way to concede. Oh, that's so gross. I was planning to pass the ball out to Dorset. The camera changed just at the last minute. Oh, that's so frustrating. And we've been the more comfortable side in that first half. And yet we go 1-0 down. Based on nothing but a silly mistake. Oh, that's so frustrating. Oh, Eli Just has managed to wriggle away from the defender there. Though he's still driving into the box. There's very little on for him. Cuts back inside and shoots. Another good save from Emmy Martinez. The defender's just backing off and backing off. Eli just somehow stormed in and won the header there. Another fantastic save from Emmy Martinez. It was straight at him, but it was a powerful header from close range, and he did really well to react in time. Good defender from Josh Key. Oh, and the referee's given a free kick. We were away there with Ryan Lancaster on the right-hand side. That's almost as frustrating as the goal. Taken short from Aston Villa. Looked as though they were going to put a ball into the box. Oh, we've just opened up. Poor communication there between Cartwright and Garbutt. And it opened up for Aston Villa. Oh, 
Oh, it's hit the post there somehow. I'm going to have to try and get the ball forward quickly if we do want one final attack. He like just is trying to do that, but he's just crowded out there. We've got a big switch on for Cartwright and it's a poor pass. That's not his game at the moment. He's a big, strong, physical player. He's decent defensively. But the technical side of his game does need work. He very much is in the Aiden Hutton mould. That was exactly Aiden Hutton's problem. He was a good defender. He was big, strong, physical. But with the ball at his feet, he was poor. So a goal from Louis Barry is the difference between the sides at half time. A very, very even game there. I don't think those stats necessarily tell the story of the first half though. Fairly even on possession, fairly even on shots, fairly even on passes. In fact, it's almost exactly even for all of them. But I think we've had the better of that first half. We've had the clearer opportunities. Really, Aston Villa haven't done too much at all. And we just gifted them a goal. And that's the difference in the game at the moment. So... Very, very disappointing way to go 1-0 down. Definitely don't feel like we deserve to be 1-0 down. Entering the second half. But definitely positives to take. We've been the better side. And I think if we play like that again in the second half, then we're going to give ourselves a really good opportunity to come away with something and progress to the next round. I think it'll be a replay if we end up getting a goal back and it, and it ends 1 all. Should be a replay, I believe. So, a trip to Villa Park would be nice. Oh, it's a great challenge. And Aston Villa are through on goal with Ollie Watkins. Jesse Cartwright doesn't manage to block, but it's a great save from Roman Hewitt. He absolutely lambasts the defence there. It's a strike from range. He got a good sight of it. And just manages to tip it round. It's a good solid save from the young goalkeeper. Good challenge from Brandon Anderson. Oh, and that's a terrible challenge. We could see a red card here, potentially. Just going to be a booking? It was a really bad challenge. And it is just a booking. I thought potentially it could, be, could have been a red. Oh, no. It wasn't quite as bad as I initially thought. I have turned referee strictness down. I had it on very strict. Just because on previous FIFAs it was so hard to get a card. So I just cranked it up to the highest strictness possible. Um, that was good at first. That was the ideal setting initially. But I think one of the recent title updates for some reason just changed things. And I was seeing a, basically a red card a game. Oh, Jake Dale, no. I have just bumped it down one just to strict. So it's still on strict rather than very strict. I think that was going wide anyway. Emmy Martinez, just making sure. And that is a lot better. I think that would have been a red card on very strict. That's got to be a freak. I'd rather take the free kick there, ref. Caleb Taylor very much out of his comfort zone. And that's a foul there. Thank you. I think we are going to see Jasper Shields at some point. We've had a couple of quick sub prompts to bring him on for both Michael Garber and Brandon Anderson. What an attempt that is. Who was that? Eli just... What an effort that was. An overhead kick direct from the free kick that was whipped into the box and another really smart save from Emmy Martinez. I think he's going to be the difference in the game. I think we're going to end up losing this and I think it's going to be because Emmy Martinez just will not let us score.
nothing at the end. Douglas Luiz. I'm wondering when I should start to get a little more aggressive and go to a more attacking game plan. The game is going well at the moment. I'm comfortable enough with how the game is playing out. I think we are still the better team. Well won from Jake Dale. He needs to make a run here to support Eli Just. He does eventually and Eli Just finds him. Jake Dale strikes with his right foot. It's his weaker foot though and he can't find the corner. Instead he finds Emmy Martinez. Redmont Rangers fans in full voice. I think we're going to make a couple of changes before we take this corner. I'm going to bring Brandon Anderson off and I'm going to bring Jasper Shields on for his debut. I think that's the only change I'm going to make for the time being. Lancaster's fine to... Oh, should I bring Lancaster off for my old Walter? I think I'll leave Lancaster for now. But 16-year-old Jasper Fields. Oh, I meant to change his number. That's a shame. It is coming on for Brandon Anderson here to make his debut. And we'll see if he can change the game at all in centre midfield there. Delivering it. Jesse Cartwright is there. He does get his head on it. It falls harmlessly into the hands of Emmy Martinez, though. I think potentially we'll throw on another striker very shortly oh it's well won we'll take the free kick though ref I think we should bring Daniel Jebison on and put him up front with Jake Dale oh. yeah I think we're going to have to do that so let's switch to an attacking game plan and I've only just made a change, but. And I think I'm going to go 4 3 3 attack. Nope, I think I'm actually going to go with a 4 2 4 to match Aston Villa. Just Dale. Cartwright is going to stay on. Shields and Garbett in midfield, and Dorset is going to come off for Jefferson. Lancaster can also come off for Maya Walter. Not 100% sure that's the right formation to switch to. Just to match Aston Villa, like for like. But I think I want to get an extra striker on. We need a goal. I want to keep Lancaster and just playing high. And beyond that, the rest of the formation is kind of dictated for us, unless we wanted to go three at the back, which I suppose was an option. How is that not out of play? No, how is that not out of play? How Diaby has kept that ball in, I do not know. It's poor defending ultimately, but. Surely that ball was out. And Roman Hewitt, that's awful positioning. He's outside of his near post there. Why on earth would you be outside of your near post? Oh, that's a really poor goal. Oh, what a finish that is from Jake Dale. Immediately getting Redmond Rangers back in the game. A thunderous strike across goal. The captain said, I'm going to have to do this all myself. Grabbed the ball, put his head down, drove into the penalty area and absolutely lashed it past Emmy Martinez. He was never saving that one. And Jake Dale 
immediately wipes away that second goal. And gets Redmond Rangers back in it. 2-1 now with about 20 minutes to go. The header one from Daniel Jebison. Jake Dale can't quite get on it though. He's hassling the Aston Villa defenders. Good challenge from Jesse Cartwright. He's looked very good today. Just really solid in centre central defence there. Oh, it's a great ball. And it's a good goal. That was fair enough. That's just a good goal from Aston Villa. And it's a two-goal lead again. Ollie Watkins this time. Firing Aston Villa's third goal in. Can't complain too much about that one, to be honest. It's a really good run. It's Jesse Cartwright that's been beaten. But it's just a very clever run from Ollie Watkins. Yeah, I can't complain too much about that one. It's a frustrating goal to concede, but that's Premier League opposition. We'll keep pressing for another goal. We'll keep chasing the game, but we've got to be honest, it's likely gone at this point. Do have a corner though. Redmond Rangers fans certainly not going home just yet. Lifted back into the box from Michael Garber. It looked like it might drop for Jake Dale for a moment, but didn't quite. Nick Zoroya does well to Oh, carve out an opportunity to cross. And it just evaded all of the Redmond players in the box, unfortunately. Nice little ball from Shields back inside to Jake Dale. Tries to square it. And if we could get someone to press the goalkeeper here, there's going to be an issue. Yeah, and Aston Villa can just play it around now. They haven't got to do too much with it. Could be a fourth here even. It's a good save from Roman Hewitt. Gets down smartly to his left to make the stop. There's a narrow angle. His positioning was much better on that attempt. Oh, and that's another poor challenge. He's gone right through the back of him. This one could be a red. And that one is a red for Gonzalo Montiel. So even on strict, we still do get red cards. It's a really bad challenge. He goes right through the back of Eli Just. Left the referee. No option but to send him off. And things looking a little rosier for Redmond Rangers now. Still very much chasing the game. Still two goals down to a Premier League side. But it's now a, a Premier League side with just 10 men. So we'll switch to ultra attacking just to see if we can force something in these final minutes of the game. Jasper Shields is going to try one. It's a good attempt from outside the area from Jasper Shields. Straight at Emi Martinez in the end, really, but he got very solid contact on it. Under some 
And Aston Villa could be away here. Caleb Taylor's going to do well to catch up with Matty Cash. Does catch up to him, but Cash just cuts inside. Puts the shot wide, though. We're going to make our final couple of changes. Not that it's going to make too much difference, to be honest. Paris Magoma can come on. And I think we're just going to have to bring on Rory Bullock to round out a back three. Uh, Dale can go here and Jefferson through the middle. Break, but no goal as a result. Well, forget the finish and just admire the way they can attack. Does look like Redmond Rangers fans have started to leave the stadium now. The seat's starting to empty somewhat. Does look like the game is beyond us, to be fair to them, but... Not a bad performance from their team by any means. Oh, nice little flick from Paris Magomo. He still has the ball on the edge of the box there. And it's a free kick, I believe. And it is. Jasper Shields is going to set up over it. I think we're just going to tap the ball. Oh, and he's hit that so hard for some reason. And is that going to be a handball? That's frustrating. It's really poor from Rory Bullock. And he wonders why he doesn't get played more often. That's so poor. Really good from Jesse Cartwright though. And Josh Key will come away with it. Cuts it inside to Daniel Jefferson. He finds Jasper Shields. We've got a player over. But the Aston Villa defender read the pass all the way. Jake Dale could have just driven into the penalty area though. The Aston Villa defender choosing to stay with the extra pass rather than close Jake Dale down. Jesse Cartwright is there again. Tries to clear it, but I think Rory Bullock just gets in the way there. And Rory Bullock is awful. Now that we've got some better players in the team, like Caelan Taylor and even Jesse Cartwright here, you really do notice how poor players like Rory Bullock are. And somehow, Jesse Cartwright's got a yellow card for that. That's unreal. He looks incredible, though, Jesse Cartwright. And there is the final whistle, a disappointing result, but a promising performance for Redmond Rangers, to be honest. Doesn't change the result, you don't progress to the, the round of 16 just because you put in a respectable performance, but I think there's a lot of reasons to, to be pleased for Hans Newman after that game. I think on the balance of things, I was going to say Aston Villa were the better side. I'm not even sure that's true, really. Maybe they were marginally the better side. They certainly weren't two goals better than us. And three goals for them is, it flatters them somewhat. But I think we put in a really good performance, actually. And they apparently have a 4.1 XG, which is ri ridiculous. There's no way they created four goals worth of, uh, of opportunities in that game. But yeah, I think first half we were probably the better side. Aston Villa probably the better side in the second half. Time for a few and Premier League opposition just take their chances when they're given to them. We weren't torn apart by Aston Villa at all. Um, we are not at this level yet though, so that seems a reasonable response. Jasper Shields got his debut today. Will he give you the confidence to try some other promising youngsters at the club? Always ready to give young players a chance. We've got a number of them in the side this year. 
and then the same for Jesse Cartwright as well. He was incredible. He looked so good. And I need to go and check out his play styles. Because he had four to five, it told us, in the Youth Academy. So where can we see those? You should be able to see them here. So he's got five play four play styles and one play style plus. It is just called block. So he's got power header, relentless, acrobatic, anticipate, and block as a playstyle plus. That's insane. This guy is going to be such a beast. And then let's check out shields as well. So he's got three: incisive pass, tiki taka, and jockey. So yeah, he's probably going to be a really good player as well. Need to decide exactly how we're going to play him. Um, I think he, he just looks to me like a, a true number eight, really. You know, that intermediary between defense and attack, just getting the ball moving side to side. Uh, staff has been found, but we don't have any vacancies available at the moment, unfortunately. And I'm happy enough with the coaches that I've got. So, a couple games to simulate to round out this episode a disappointing loss to Aston Villa means we don't progress to the last 16 of the FA Cup but we still do have some League 2 games to try and win here so I think we're going to go back to the 4-4-2 for this game Taylor and Cartwright are going to start in defence I think start Cartwright's just going to be a, a regular starter for us now um, Dorset, De Silva, Magoma, Shields, Walter and Tavide is probably going to be our bench as well to be honest. So let's jump into the game with that starting 11 against Burton Albion. Let's see what Dorset's got to say for him. I think I could do a job at centre back if you give me the chance. It's going to take some hard work and then Daniel Jebison, you will come back in. So, Burton Albion in the league. They're going to play a 5-2-3. We're going to play a 4-4-2. Let's see if we can come away with the win. And we actually lose 1-0 uh, rather to Burton Albion. So, that's a really disappointing result. They're not a particularly good side, Burton Albion. Should be a game that we're winning. Um, I'll think about putting Bullock in. Tavide wants to go out on loan and I would be happy for that to happen um, that's kind of what I had planned potentially anyway for next season um, he is on the loan list already he is going to get the start in this game though we're going to have to rotate the squad a decent amount for this game I think Shields is going to get his first start here um, Brett Gibbs is going to play. Sam Ford can make the bench. Bullock and Dorset can be our centre back pairing. And then I'm actually going to start Oscar Duarte for this game. And so our third and final game of the episode is against Plymouth. They are hot on our tail in seventh place eager to try and get a, a playoff place we're actually in fourth position though and we've got at least one game in hand on a number of teams around us and, and two games in hand actually on the team directly above and below us in Charlton and Portsmouth so we're in a pretty good position here if we win both of those games in hand that'll take us right up to 57 points and back up into third just two points behind Rotherham although we do only have one game in hand on Rotherham this is a massive game though we've got a game in hand on Plymouth and we're playing them in this game currently five points ahead of them so if we can get a win here that's going to be massive for um, securing a playoff place so let's go to the press conference how do we plan to approach it um, focus on the performance Go all out to get a win. Can we make up lost ground? We have let our standards slip a little bit, but we will keep fighting. And then how can we find a bit of consistency? We're working hard at it on the training ground, that kind of thing. So really big game here. 
They're going to play a 4 1 4 1. It's, it's a six pointer this game, I would say. I don't say that too often, but a six pointer. So let's see what we can do. And it's a draw. It's not the worst result. A win obviously would have been much better. Daniel Jefferson rescues a point late on in the 84th minute. It's not ideal, but it's also not a loss. So it could certainly have been worse. How pleased were we with the way the team responded? Um, we were resilient today. Were we satisfied with the team's performance? Disappointed we couldn't keep a clean sheet. If we would have kept a clean sheet, we would have won. Where is the problem? We've played a lot of games recently. We have had quite a, a, a congested fixture list in the last week or two. So that's going to do it for this week in terms of games. Let's just zoom ahead to the next game. See where we are in the table. We've got a loan to buy offer here from Heidenheim. I would be happy for Tavino to go out on a one-year loan to them when the window opens again in the summer. So we'll accept that. And then Zoro wants to start in the next game, which he will. So our manager ratings dropped quite a lot. We're down to orange now. Let's take a look at our objectives. We've failed reaching the round of 16. I think, to be honest, we're probably going to fail gaining automatic promotion as well. Uh, we have secured the brand exposure objective. And the others are residual from last season. So that short-term one in the youth development we failed last year. We didn't get another chance of that this year. Same with keeping player salary growth under 5%. We failed that last year. It didn't renew. So I'm not sure if they're going to count as failed again this year. So we've got Portsmouth in the next game. Um, we're going to go back to probably a full strength 11. I won't set that up now. I'll do that between episodes. And let's take a quick look at the standings and the games we're going to play in the next episode. So we are still in fourth place with that draw against Plymouth. Plymouth actually drop away all the way down to 10th with the draw that they secured against us. So we're on 52 points. We are eight points behind Rotherham in second, but with a game in hand. And we are four points ahead of Peterborough in, in um, seventh rather, but also with a game in hand. Multiple games in hand on the teams in our immediate vicinity, so I think at this stage of the season, 31 games played. Um, what have we got? 43, 46 games um, to play in total. So, yeah, at this stage with, what, 15 games left to play, I think it's just a case of trying to secure a playoff place. We've got 14 wins, 10 draws, 7 losses. We've scored 53, which is a good total. Looks to be the second highest in the league behind Ipswich, and it is. And we've conceded 41, which is more than double that Ipswich have conceded. And that is consistent with the team's kind of 15th and lower, really. So we need to shape up defensively if we are going to secure that playoff place and even try and chase down Rotherham and, and finally catch them up and nab one of those extra um, or nab that second automatic playoff automatic promotion place um, Ipswich they're going to win the league let's be honest they're not being caught but yeah I think Rotherham we need to set our sights on them and really try and catch them up in the next couple of months so we're going to round out February in the next episode we've got a game against Portsmouth a game against Wigan and a game against Bristol Rovers and then we've got Rotherham just after that so I imagine that's going to be the game we play in a couple of episodes time Portsmouth one of those teams around us in the playoffs so potentially that'll be the game that we play in the next one but a really important run in here february march april very very important months in redmont rangers kind of club history here so it's going to make or break not only our season but potentially hans newman's future as redmont rangers manager the board not liking the way things are looking at the moment so we're gonna to have to secure that playoff place at the very least but hopefully chase down Rotherham and you know make uh, meet the, the board's wishes really 
and secure that second automatic promotion place so we'll try and do that in the next episode with three wins if we could get back to some unbeaten episodes that would be really good build up another streak um, so we'll look to do that in the, epi- in the next episode so until that episode take it easy